What's up, everybody? Welcome to Moxie Best, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. I'm Katie Mox, doing a solo pod today. And today we're going to talk NFL picks, props, bets, you name it. Although I don't know that I have any props actually this week, but we will get into the full slate of games. We've got Saturday games and Sunday games. We're at that point in the season where we get double NFL. Absolutely love it. But before we get to the picks... There is something that is floating around the sports world right now that everybody is discussing, and it has to do with my Golden State Warriors, Draymond Green, his sixth suspension, and how will this affect the Warriors? Uh, Green has been suspended indefinitely by the NBA for punching uh, Yusef Nurkic on Wednesday night. Uh, per Woj, Draymond Green, the Warriors GM, and Green's agent are expected to meet on Thursday, so that's today, to start discussing a path of counseling and help for Green to move forward. The league really didn't put a specific number on his suspension. This is Draymond Green's third ejection this year already. It's his fourth suspension since he punched Jordan Poole ahead of the 2022 season, and this is his sixth career suspension. And the second one, again, of just this season, no other NBA player has received a suspension this year. In terms of financial, what Green is going to lose, $153,000, a little bit more than that, um, per game. If he is suspended fewer than 20 games, um, if it's more than 20 games, that he's going to lose almost over $200,000 per year. Look, I am a huge Warriors fan. I have been since a kid growing up in the in the Bay Area. I still have my loud Warriors fan shirt when I used to scream my head off, actual literal screams um, at the free throw line when the opposing team was um, trying to, to score those shots. Um, and I have a Draymond Green jersey. I am I am a big Draymond Green fan. And I have to tell you, I am sick of him. I am absolutely sick of him. He is an embarrassment to himself and his family, first and foremost, to the Warriors organization and the NBA as a whole. Now, I say that also with the caveat of something is not right with Draymond Green. We've all known him to be unhinged at moments. I mean, I just... I went through and I talked about all the suspensions and the things that he's done. You know, you look back into last year, stomping on Sabonis's chest uh, when he put Rudy Gobert in a chokehold earlier this year. Like he's had things here and there where he's cost the Warriors, I don't know, a ring uh, when he got ejected against uh, LeBron James that year. But it's now getting up to the point where it's like something is wrong with Draymond Green. And if you can't handle yourself in a way that you can cool off and take a step back and you're getting all of these suspensions and they're piling up on top of each other, something is wrong and this guy needs help. And we've heard that through you know, NBA players all week long. They're like, something is wrong here. You even heard KD saying, that's not the Draymond that I knew. You know, I hope that he gets the help that he needs. And the thing is, is Draymond Green never has any accountability. The Warriors organization stands behind him every single time that this happens. They make excuses. He comes out himself saying he doesn't think that it's worth Worthy of a suspension. Well, now you're looking at an indefinite suspension. And it seems to be that, yes, counseling and some kind of anger management needs to be a part of this. You can't just, oh, you're going to sit out a few games and then come back. There's something going on with Draymond Green. I hope that he gets the help that he needs because I don't think that he is really this terrible person, unfortunately, that he has shown to be this season. So let's hope that he gets help. Um, I don't know how long the suspension is going to be. I really do hope that there is anger management that is coupled with this, and he's got to complete some kind of a program and prove that he is, as soft as this sounds, safe to be on the court with. Because if you're sucker punching your teammates, if you're putting opponents in chokeholds, if you're coming back and he said he, he didn't know what he was doing, he was trying to prove, no, I'm sorry. You absolutely just socked him in the face there. Players aren't safe. They have to be able to know that they can come to practice and they can come to games without getting sucker punched or have their chest stepped on or all of the things that Draymond Green has been doing. So until he can prove that he is safe for players to come out with, I fully support this. And I think even Warriors fans, we are sick of it and we want him to get help. So that's that. Obviously, the Warriors right now in, in a bit of free fall. And, you know, the, the most interesting thing about this, too, is Draymond Green this year said this is the most important year for him and for the Warriors. He felt like the energy was so good. Obviously, a dig at Jordan Poole there this year, and things were going great. And then, and then look, he seems to be angrier and more unhinged than he has been his entire career. The trade deadline is approaching. Uh, Clay 
Clay doesn't look good. When Clay looks bad, man, he looks really, really bad. So you got to look at this. You say, is Draymond Green worth the drama? Are the Warriors going to try to do something to get rid of? No one wants Green. Nobody wants Green. Okay. You're going to take this liability. You're going to take this guy that's been suspended multiple times this year. No, no. Green is staying on on the team, and it's not for the Warriors wanting him. It's the fact that nobody else wants him now. Clay Thompson is a little bit interesting. I don't necessarily think they get rid of him. You know, he's on the end of his contract here. Uh, another interesting thing is people are talking about Steph Curry, and and rightfully, I think to a certain extent, saying if this were a LeBron team, people would be looking at him saying, "Where's the leadership?" How are you allowing this to happen? Why aren't you stepping in and being the leader of this team and pulling everybody together? My counter to that would be LeBron doesn't have the same experience that Steph does in that LeBron has jumped around to different teams and LeBron has come in as an authoritative figure to teams that need a boost. And so they look to him to be that leader. Steph Curry and Draymond Green and Clay and Iggy, when he was still there, they all started together. They did this together. And that, that's not to say that Steph Curry isn't the greatest shooter of all time and, and arguably the greatest player of all time. But he and Draymond are peers where I feel like, you know, LeBron James hasn't come into a situation where he has had a real peer. It's probably a little bit harder for him. But yes, Steph Curry does need to step up here and the Warriors need to figure it out. They're in 11th place right now. They're 10 and 13. You can never count out, really, a Steph Curry team just like you couldn't with Tom Brady and just like you can't really with Patrick Mahomes, even though we've seen the Chiefs and their offense struggling this year. So don't count them out, um, but it'll be interesting to see how the Warriors uh, move forward here. All right, guys, we're going to move on now to week 15 of the NFL season and get in on some of the Saturday action. We've got some Saturday games, so let's take a look at them. We've got Minnesota Vikings at the Bengals. Bengals laying three here. I believe that line has moved to two and a half in some places. You've got the Pittsburgh Steelers, Steelers excuse me, and the Colts. Um, really tight spread here. Colts laying one and a half. And then you got the Broncos and the Lions. Broncos, for some reason, are four and a half point dogs here, um, four in some places. My picks for Saturday, I'm taking the Bengals. I'm laying this two and a half. I'm laying the three. If you could get it under a field goal, get it. If not, I'm still comfortable laying the three here versus the Vikings. The Josh Dobbs, Rocket Man, uh, Can You Take Me Higher fairy tale seems to have crashed back down to earth. He got pulled for Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins is supposed to start this week. Look, I'm a 49ers fan. I know Nick Mullins. I've seen Nick Mullins. It's nothing to get all that excited. He is serviceable. He is serviceable as a backup quarterback, but let's not get overly excited here. Jake Browning, on the other hand, like to me, this guy is no fluke. Since he has dropped 34 points in each of his last two starts, I think the Bengals win this game by a touchdown. So again, I'm laying the two and a half, but feel comfortable at the field goal. Next up, I'm looking at this Broncos team and I'm saying, hell yeah, I'm taking the four points versus the Lions. This Lions team started out so ferocious this year, right? They won against the Chiefs the first game of the season. They were looking like nobody could stop them. The vibes were high, as our friend Martin Weiss told us. The vibes were very high with the Lions. Uh, not so high anymore. Yes, they have one of the most potent offenses in the league. They certainly can outpace the Broncos if they wanted to, but the defense can't stop anything. Defensively, this team has given up 28 points in each of their last two games. The Broncos have won six of their last seven, and they've covered five of those games. Russell Wilson looks pretty good, people, okay? And he looks really good when he's paired with Cortland Sutton, who has 10 touchdowns so far this season. So grab the points with uh, with the Broncos here. And I'm not saying they win this game. I can I can see this. I see it closing closer to a field goal, so I'm going to grab those points. We're going to take a quick break here. When we return, we're going to talk more Sunday action for Week 15 of the NFL. Why should you bet with Caesars Sportsbook? Two words, Caesars Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. 21 and over must be physically present in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming, or Washington, D.C. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, 
Utah, and other states where prohibited. Know when to stop before you start. Gambling problem, Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, Ohio, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, affiliated with Harris, Philadelphia. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-426-2537. Or in Maryland, visit mdgamblinghelp.org. Or West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Colorado, D.C., Nevada, Wyoming, Kansas, affiliated with Kansas Crossing Casino. Call 1-800-522-4700. Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Iowa, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Louisiana, call 1-877-770-STOP. License through Horseshoe, Bossier City, and Harris, New Orleans. Massachusetts, if you or a loved one is experiencing problems with gambling, please call 1-800-327-5050. Or visit gamblinghelplinema.org for 24-7 support. Michigan, call 1-800-270-7117. New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NEW-YORK. Or text HOPE-NEW-YORK-467-369. All right, welcome back here on Moxie Bets. Uh, looking at more action for Week 15, and I'm looking at the Cowboys and the Bills, and I'm taking the under 50 and a half. I don't remember the last time we saw total over 50, guys. We've been looking at such low totals in 31, 33. I think we even saw one dip under 30 just a couple of weeks ago. 50 and a half just feels like almost I got like sticker shock, like I'm a little afraid of it. And this does seem really high when you think about these two teams. Both the Cowboys and the Bills coming off of extremely emotional wins, probably their biggest wins of the season. The Bills defeated KC in Kansas City for the first time. They were on the other side of bad calls, right? And they weren't the ones that were leaving sad. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was. And then you got Dallas taken down Philly, which was a huge for them in terms of this NFC and where they're going to rank now. They even things out. The boys held the Eagles to just 13 points last week, and the Bills held the Chiefs to just 17. The math ain't math in here. Um, I'm going to take this under 15 and a half. Might be a little bit more sloppy of a game considering both, both of these teams coming off emotional wins. Um, and I really expect the defenses to step up here here. Next, Tommy DeVito. Tommy Cutlets. Come on. A little bit of this. I love this Giants team. I'm taking them plus six versus the Saints because why are the Saints six-point favorites against anybody? Forget about the Tommy Cutlets, Tommy DeVito phenomenon that's happening right now. The Saints offense under Carr, or really actually who has been a quarterback, it's a mess. It's a complete mess. We saw the O-line men fighting with Carr last week. They don't even like him. The G-Men's defense has actually been playing fairly well. They kind of struggle a little bit in the beginning of the season. It's starting to uptick a little bit. The Saints absolutely struggle to stop the run. They have over the last couple of weeks. Carolina and Detroit had over 200 rush yards in their matchups versus the Saints. That's over five yards per carry, right? And that's happened in the last three games. New York's game plan should be very simple. As much as I love DeVito, which by the way, him on his rush yards is pretty interesting. I might look at that. There was no uh, no props when I was looking at this, these games earlier today. But New York game plan, feed your big dog. Feed Saquon Barkley and just run all over them. You should be able to keep this within the, within six. Excuse me, taking the points there. And then here's a shocker for some people. Eagles double result. Oh, yeah. The Eagles are going against the Seahawks. Both of these bird gangs, if you will, have been on losing streaks. Seattle has basically dropped out of the playoff race, which is really crazy. Four straight losses. This is one of my best bets coming into the season was that Seattle at minus 120 would make the playoffs. And now that seems like it's impossible for that to happen. Philly also coming off of um, two pretty big losses themselves, San Francisco and then Dallas back to back. The Eagles have a zero margin for error if they want to compete for the number one seed in the NFC. And you bet your bottom dollar they absolutely do. They are three, one, and one against the spread as a road favorite this season. You got to give the edge to Sirianni in this spot to have his team ready for a huge bounce back on Monday Night Football. I like I like Philly to come out strong. This whole we're going to, you know, we could have these second quarter comebacks or second uh, half comebacks. No, they don't want to get into that. They don't want to get into that. So they're going to come out strong. They're going to lead and win in the first quarter, and then they're going to come out and win the game. We might not see Geno Smith in this game. He's still a sit question. If you have Drew Locke, oh, my God, it's even better. But I love the Eagles in this spot. Take them for a double result. It's at even money. Those are my bets. Thank you so much for joining us today on Moxie Bets uh, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Uh, don't forget to follow us on social as well at Moxie Bets, and we will see you next time.